Hi and welcome to Trigonometry Exact Values. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes chapter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So to begin with, I'm just going to look at a couple of triangles, a couple of, uh, couple of triangles with some very important features. Um, and we're going to use a little bit of Pythagoras in order to find some missing lengths within these diagrams. So in our first diagram, um, we have a, uh, a triangle, right angle triangle with a length of one and another length of one. And therefore, if I want to find the longer side, the hypotenuse, well, that is going to be the square root of one squared plus one squared. And one squared plus one squared, well, that is two. So the square root of that is the square root of two. It is just root two. We don't know the exact answer to that. Therefore, we just leave it as root two. In the equilateral triangle, I've got a side of 2, another side of 2, and there's another side of 2. Um, now, I've added in a line of symmetry here, the, uh, the perpendicular line straight down the centre of that shape, and that has created the right angle triangle. Now, if that's the case, then I can actually think of this, instead of it being a length of 2, I can think of that as being a length of 1 and another length of 1. And so now, if I'm dealing with this right angle triangle, if I want to find this length, well, this length is actually um, uh, the short side of the triangle. And so it's going to be, using Pythagoras, it's going to be 2 squared take away 1 squared, but the square root of that. 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, so 4 take away 1 is 3. And so this piece here is just the square root of 3. Now, let's think about some angles as well. Um, this first triangle, well, it is an isosceles triangle. I have two sides the same length, and therefore these two angles must also be the same size. And if this is 90 degrees, I only have 90 degrees left to split between the two, and therefore they both must be 45 degrees. In the equilateral triangle, well, the rule about an equilateral triangle is that all angles are equal. So all of the angles would have to be 60 degrees. But what we've actually done is at the top, we've split it into two equal pieces. And so at the top, we have 30 degrees in both cases. Now, you may wonder what this has to do with trigonometry. Well, the relationship here is that we've got angles in a right angle triangle and corresponding lengths of the different sides. So let's see how we can use that to find exact values. So what I've done is I've produced a table involving um, the sine, cos and tan, and with 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees and 90 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the triangles we've just produced in order to try and fill in the uh, spaces in each of these diagrams. So first of all, let's just remind ourselves of sine, cos and tan. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan equals opposite over adjacent, just using Sokotoa. And so if I'm using 30 degrees, well, I need to be thinking about this triangle. And for sine, I am looking for opposite over hypotenuse. And so the opposite side would be 1. And the um, hypotenuse would be 2, because at this point, I'm not actually thinking about this being an equilateral triangle. I'm just thinking about the right angled triangle. And so sine 30 is exactly a half. If I was thinking about sine 45, well, I would need to be thinking about this angle here. And sine is the opposite, which is 1 over the hypotenuse, which is root 2. So 1 over root 2. But this is not uh, quite how we like it. If we've got um, 1 over root 2, if you ever just type that into a calculator, it would switch things around a little bit. Um, it would actually call it root 2 over 2. They would mean exactly the same. Root 2 over 2 is the same as 1 over root 2. Um, for 60 degrees, again, I would now be thinking about this angle. And if I took the opposite side, that would be root 3. 
and it will be over the hypotenuse of 2. Now with 90 degrees um, what we need to think about here is opposite over hypotenuse. Unfortunately um, the opposite to the uh, 90 degree angle is actually the hypotenuse and therefore we can't say what uh, that is using uh, using it but I will tell you that if we follow the pattern here we have 1 over 2 we have root 2 over 2 we have root 3 over 2 we actually end up with root 4 over 2 and root 4 over 2 well that is 2 over 2 it is 1 and you could think of that as being the opposite 2 over the hypotenuse which is also 2 and um, if you do follow this though if you follow the same pattern um, what's carrying on is that we would actually get 0 over 2 here so sine begins with an answer of 0 so sine of 0 is 0 as well if we think about cos I'm going to change color and I'm going to go to cos of 30 and so again back to this diagram well that is telling me adjacent over hypotenuse so the adjacent is root 3 and the hypotenuse is still 2 so root 3 over 2 if I wanted the cosine of 45 well that would be the adjacent 1 over um, over root 2 which you can see is actually exactly the same as it was for sine and therefore that is root 2 over 2 for 60 if I went for the adjacent the adjacent side would be 1 and over the hypotenuse would be 2 so it's a half and therefore again if we follow the patterns involved we've got 1 over 2 we've got root 2 over 2 we've got root 3 over 2 and so this would be root 4 over 2 or 1 and going backwards root 3 root 2 root 1 0 and what you'll find is that sine and cosine are actually the opposites of each other and that is because sine and cosine are the opposites they are the opposites of each other um, they are the inverse and finally if we look at tan uh, so tan 30 let's begin with tan 30 um, tan is opposite over adjacent so that is 1 over root 3 but like we had with sine and cos we're actually going to just rewrite that if I multiply I'm actually going to get root 3 over 3 for tan of 45 again opposite over adjacent well that is going to be 1 over 1 and so it is 1 um, in the um, uh, and then tan of 60 well tan of 60 opposite is root 3 and adjacent is 1 so root 3 over 1 which we can just call root 3 and then we come to tan of 0 and tan of 90 well tan of 0 is 0 tan of 90 this is one that you don't actually need to know because this one is undefined it's not actually something you can calculate um, and that is because we don't get an opposite or an adjacent um, to uh, to the 90 degree angle um, in this case so the reason we've looked at the two triangles um, and uh, the table uh, of values is that it is expected that you are going to memorize all of these values. It's going to be expected that in the exam um, you can use any of these values within, an, within a question, especially on the non-calculator paper, in order to come to an answer. Um, and so an example would be the angles in a triangle are in the ratio 1 to 2 to 3 and it can be shown that the triangle is right angled. Now, what that is telling us is if we are thinking about our triangle here, um, we know that the angles are in the ratio 1 to 2 to 3, and one of them is a right angle, meaning 90 degrees. Now, that must be the largest angle in there. The other two angles, well, they are need to be based on the ratio. So the first part is going to be a third of that size, so 30 degrees, and the other one is then going to be double that. 60 so it's telling me that I have a triangle that looks like this and the other piece of information is that the hypotenuse of the triangle is 15 centimeters long calculate the length of the shortest side in the triangle now the sketch is useful here because the sketch lets us know that actually the shortest side is going to be this one here 
Now, if I want to use this, uh, find this value, I need to think about whether I'm going to use sine or cos or tan. And in this case, let's use the 30 degrees here as our angle. And so if I were labeling the diagram, I would have my opposite, my hypotenuse, and my adjacent. Those are the two values I'm interested in, opposite and hypotenuse, and therefore I'm going to use sine. And I'm going to use sine 30 equals the opposite, which is the value we want to find, over the hypotenuse. Now, this would be perfectly easy with a calculator, but actually it's quite easy without a calculator, because do we know what sine 30 is? Well, sine 30 is a half. And therefore, that is telling me that a half equals x over 15. And if that is the case, how do I find out what x is? Well, all I need to do is multiply by 15. If I multiply by 15, that's 15 over 2 equals x. And so x equals 7.5 centimetres. Next, we're looking to try to find the length x in this diagram. Um, but what we need to think about here is the fact that um, in order to find x, we're probably going to have to find some other lengths as well. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ignore length x and just deal with the right angle triangle here. Now, if I uh, have any information, I know that the hypotenuse of that uh, triangle is 18 centimeters. I know that the angle here is 30 degrees and so I can actually work out um, the height of this triangle I call that one O for opposite and I can do that by using sine again so sine of 30 equals opposite over the hypotenuse which is 18 and sine 30 well if we remember from our table well that is a half so a half is opposite over 18 so if I multiply by 18, I get that 18 over 2 is the opposite. And therefore, that opposite side is 9 centimetres. And we can use that in order to find x. Because now, all we have is a right angle triangle with two sides that we know. And so all I want to do is find out the length of x. I'm going to use a little bit of Pythagoras. 9 squared plus 4 squared and then square rooted. Well, 9 squared is 81, 4 squared is 16, so that is 97. It is the square root of 97. And given that this is a non-calculator question, that's exactly how we would leave our answer, that x is root 97. And so we end with our exam question. It came from the OCR paper in June 2018 and it was on higher paper 5, the non-calculated paper. The diagram shows two right angle triangles, ABD and BCD, showing a common side BD. AD equals 10 centimetres, BC equals 12 centimetres and angle DBC equals 60 centimetres. Work out the length of AB. Now, Again, this is like our previous question. The first thing we actually need to think about is the fact we have a side which is shared between them. Now, that is going to be the key length within this, uh, within this question. And so, I'm going to think about the triangle where I know the most information. I've got an angle and I've got a side. And so, if I want to find BD, well, th if I label this that is going to be my adjacent that's going to be my opposite that's going to be my hypotenuse i want to find the adjacent using the hypotenuse so i'm going to use cos so cos 60 equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse which is 12. now cos 60 we need to think carefully about what cos 60 actually is now cos 60 if you remember from the table cos 60 is just a half and so half equals a over 12. And so in order to get the adjacent side, I'm going to multiply by 12. And so my adjacent side is 6. Now the question was, what is the length of AB? Well, now we have a right angle triangle. 
where we know two sides and therefore to get the last side all I'm going to do is 10 squared I'm going to take away 6 squared and I'm going to square root this is using Pythagoras in order to find the short side 10 squared is 100 6 squared is 36 so it's the square root of 100 take away 36 which is the square root of 64 which gives me an answer of 8 so AB must be 8 centimetres long.